Hello everyone. Today we're going to go and check out some more quick PowerShell and we're going to go and check out get AD user and set AD user for how to actually do some basic user administration on on-site Active Directory and our domain controllers. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so I have here um, PowerShell ISC and I'm on a domain controller and as you can see I've got Active Directory users and computers here I've just got some example accounts this is not a real environment for us to play with now before we actually go off and do anything with Active Directory we need to make sure that we've got the right module installed so let's just do get dash module on here and we should say that we have the Active Directory module actually loaded if you don't have the Active Directory module loaded you have to install this through the RSET tools on your computer. You can do this with the command install dash uh, Windows feature RSET dash AD dash PowerShell and that will install this onto your computer. Now when we go and run the PowerShell commands and get AD user in a moment this is going to connect to our domain controllers automatically. It's also going to use the current user account that I'm actually logged in with. So if I do a who am I on here you can see that I'm actually logged in as administrator. So all the commands I'm going to be running have the ability to run as admin. So let's clear that down and let's get started. So we're going to start off with this get AD user command. There's a whole bunch of commands within Active Directory PowerShell. This is one of the most basic. This is going to allow us to get lists of users and also check out some of the properties of those users. So if I run get AD user and I go and type, for example, get AD user identity Abby, we can see that I actually have an account here called Abby Skinner. And if I go and run get identity Abby, run that, I get the output. But there's not much properties that actually come back here. One of the first things you'll find out with get ad user is the fact that the, not all the properties come back so if I go and look at Abby Skinner take note here in Active Directory users and computers I have advanced features turned on if I go and look at Abby Skinner I have in the attribute editor a lot of attributes not all of those are actually coming back if I want all of those to come back I have to use the properties parameter here and put a star at the end of it what this will do is it will actually make the request to the Active Directory domain controller to pull back all the properties of that user account and we can go and run that as well okay so we've had a look at redeeming all the properties here from Abby what about if I wanted to go and grab things in a slightly different way so if we get rid of this identity section down here I could use something called the filter parameter and with this I can go and pull off multiple or I could go and collect multiple accounts and I could do this on uh, searches rather than on exact names so if I do get AD use a filter then I filter on Sam account name notice this filter does actually need to be in double quotes here and some account name, I'm going to use a like switch rather than an EQ because an EQ would be a direct equals. And if I go and say A with a star rather than Abby, if you pop this in as a filter and go and run this, I'm going to collect all the user accounts here that begin with A. Notice the single quotes and the double quotes, that's actually very important there. You have to make sure to get the right single quotes and double quotes. What I could also do is I could specify this to come out in a different way. So I could do, for example, a format dash table rather than a format dash list and I could see that in a little bit of a nicer way down here within the shell. Uh, notice it's only bringing back the properties that I that it thinks I need in this case distinguish name, enable, given name and name. So if I want to make that a little bit neater I could for example before sending it to format table I could use select and I could select for example name and I could select for example enabled and then pipe that to format list and then I get a much neater kind of arrangement here of just name and just enabled. Okay, so another way I could actually go and filter for things is I could go and look for organizational units. So if I come down here and have a look at this IT organizational unit, if I go into the properties of it, there is actually a full inside the attribute editor here, name or distinguished name of this organizational unit. It's the OUIT, it's in the DC of a data from the DC com. If I go and grab this from here, I can use this as a filter if I want to as well. So I could do something like get dash AD user and I could use this option for search base. If I pop that in here as my search base, just paste this as OUIT, uh, DC of data, I've just got to put this in two double quotes because it has to be a string I can also still use that same filter option and I could use filter star 
and I could just do properties of name. That's all I want to actually pull back here. If I run that item now, I'm just going to get all the user accounts that actually exist in here with all the default properties and the additional name of name. Again, we might want to pipe that to a format table rather than a format list to make it look a bit nicer. But now I'm just seeing all the user accounts that are in that OU of IT. So we could actually go and get this a bit further. Maybe we don't want to actually see this as an output in the shell. There's a couple of ways we could do this. Um, one of those might be that we want to actually go and pass this out to a CSV file. So to go and export this to a CSV file, all I need to do is use this additional command on here, export dash CSV. And we'll just notice at the moment, check out the current directory that I'm in. So PWD, I'm in C users administrator. Let's just go into CD desktop of that, uh, just to make this a little easier to see. So I'm going to do export dash CSV. And the path that I'm actually going to use is going to be the current path that I'm in. So dot backslash down here, um, which is going to be my desktop at the moment. And then I'm just going to pop this into get dash ad users dot csv, which should be perfectly fine for us. Um, and we're also going to include no type information. So the reason why we don't want any type information, because that's going to put some titles on the CSV and make it look a bit messy. So let's go and run that whole command down here. And what we should find is it's dumped into a CSV file on our desktop. So let's go check that out. Open up File Explorer. And we'll go and have a look at desktop over here. Get users.csv. Open that up. Open it up with Notepad. And we should find there is the CSV export for all of our users inside that OU. So that's a nice way of actually exporting stuff if we really want to. Maybe we want to actually clean that up a little bit beforehand. So maybe we'll pipe that one more time. Let's just go and do a select and let's just do name and enable the game. We'll go and pipe that again. We'll go and overwrite that CSV file because if you don't use dash append when doing an, uh, an, a CSV, it will actually overwrite the whole thing. As you can see, there is just name enabled and I can do whatever I want to do with that um, CSV file. Now there is another command that you might want to know and that's the set ad user command. So maybe if I just pop this out here and get us a new tab just to play with things. Let's just check something out here. Let's just do it. another get dash ad user. Uh, let's do get ad user um, identity is going to equal Abby again. And we're also going to do a properties and we're going to add another property to this. We're just going to do location for Abby. In fact, we're not going to do location. We're going to do city for Abbey. And let's go and run that. So we can see that Abbey at the moment is currently sitting in the city of London. Maybe we want to change Abbey. So what we could do is we could pipe that to another command. We could use set dash ad user if we want to change properties. And I now have to specify the property. Now here, every single property that I'm returning is actually going to be on a parameter for me. So if I just go into city like this, I can change the city parameter from London to maybe, for example, Paris. We can send Abby to Paris. I mean, it's normally Emily going to Paris, but we'll send Abby to Paris to join her. And we will go and get that same, whoops, we'll go and get that same user here, Abby. And we're going, going to play just that line and we can see that Abby is now living in Paris. Now there's a bit of a thing here because this property is not a default property. If I go and take this property off now, and take the set ad user off, rerun this for get ad user identity abbey, you'll see I have no location property. But what about if I try and set this? So if I do set dash ad user again, same thing I did, and do a dash city and change the city from not London to Paris, we'll change that to Madrid. Okay, I'll go and run that and the timer, we'll see what happens here. So we're going to execute that command. And now we'll go back and do get dash identity Ooh, get uh, dash ad user sorry dash identity and we'll look at abby one more time and we'll also use that property um or that non-default property of city and we should see that they are they are actually set to madrid so even if we're not setting the property over here on abby we can still go and actually use that set ad user command with the city of Madrid. Now we've got to be a bit careful with this as well because if we take something like what we were playing around with before, so something like this entire search base over here, if we go and get that entire get ad user search base from here and paste it in front, we might have a bit of a problem. Be wary that this filter star is going to actually affect everybody in IT.
So if I go and run this command, get AD user search space for that, set AD user city Madrid, what's actually going to happen is if I go and run this and pull back properties of city on top, you're going to find that every single person inside that get AD user space has now had their city set to Madrid. Now, what about if I remove that search base as well? Now, what that's actually done, if that command has changed every single user account to the city of Madrid. And if you do this, there isn't an undo option. Okay, so you've got to be very, very careful when you're doing set AD users on multiple users. Make sure you definitely get everybody correct. One of the ways that you could actually help prevent that, if you wanted to move everybody to Paris, what you could do is you could put extra switches on here as well. There is a dash what if switch. If you run that dash what if switch here and execute that command for set AD user, it won't actually execute it. What it will do though is it will display you all the things that it was actually going to do. In this case, set everybody to a city location of Paris. What we could also do is not just the what if, we could also do a different switch. We could do confirm. And if we run confirm instead, what happens is it asks me to confirm every single action that it's going to do. So if you are going to use set AD user to act to um, set multiple users uh, all at the same time, you might want to do what if first just to make sure that you've got your command perfect before you actually go and execute that. Otherwise, you might find yourself changing a lot of the environment very, very quickly. It is also possible, if you want to, not just to select one single thing here, you can actually select multiple entries too. So maybe you want to select, for example, office. So city is Paris. Office is going to be called uh, French office. Okay. And we could actually go and run that again for that entire IT department. We'll take the confirm off. We could also put another switch on here if we really want to. You could put the switch for verbose. Because just take note of this. If I go and run this command here without verbose, as you saw before, when I execute this whole command, it just does it. It doesn't tell me what it's done. I'm not 100% sure. But if I put verbose on here and change this office from French office to French speaking, okay, and I run verbose, notice it gives me the output of everything that's actually done. So be wary of that one too. You could actually select multiple uh, entries in here inside set AD user. You don't have to completely repeat that command all the time. One final very common thing that you can do with set dash AD user very quickly is there is the ability to do enabled and disabled users. So for example, if I took set AD user identity of Abby again in this on this machine, I could choose this option for enabled. Now, if you're doing enabled here, you've actually got to use the options of dollar true and dollar false. So if I want to enable Abby's account, I put a dollar true on here. If I want to disable Abby's account, I put a dollar false on here. But notice what I'm actually doing and how I'm doing it. This enabled here has some double, qu uh, not double quotes. This enabled here has a colon and then the default variable of dollar false. It doesn't have a space and then a false and space and then a true. Okay. So if you're setting up an uh, enabled for enabled or disabled, make sure you get that syntax correct. And that kind of brings together a conclusion of a very brief introduction into get AD user and set AD user. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like, please leave a comment. If you want more advanced things with get AD user and set AD user, let me know because I can produce a much longer video on this topic if there's a lot of people out there that want to see it. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.